Hey, I'm RC and welcome to the episode 11 about creating a game in HTML5. So if you haven't watched last episode, then I would highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So this is our game so far. So we got the player, we can move it around. It can shoot bullet. Um, there's also power up. And what I'm planning to do in this video is to make it so we can control the player using the keyboard. And we will also make it so the player only shoot when we actually click with the mouse. So this is what I got in mind. Okay, so the very first thing we will change is the way the player generate bullets. So right now what we do is we do frame count modulo a certain value, taking into consideration the attack speed. And if it's true, then we generate the bullet. So let's say the attack speed was one, and this becomes 25. Frame count modulo 25 equals zero. It's only true when frame count is um, 25. 50 or 75 so once every 25 frames considering the frame count increase by one every frame so this works great when we want to do something every x frame but in our case we want the bullet to be spawned when the player clicks with the mouse so we cannot use a module in that case so what we will do instead is that we will have a counter that by default is zero and every frame that counter will get increased by the player attack speed which by default is one so we increase the counter and if the counter is greater than 25 then we will generate the bullet so the two things the one before with the modulo and this is exactly equivalent at this point but yeah, obviously one thing missing right there is the um, counter equals zero. So obviously after um, generating the bullet, you want to reset the counter to zero. Otherwise this will always be true. So one great thing about using counter is that this logic, we can place it somewhere else. We don't have to call it every single frame for it to work. Um, so what we will do is that we will create a new function document on click so this is I don't know if you remember we already have something called document on move right here so this function is being called every time the mouse move and then we can do logic with the mouse right there but there's also another function called document on click and then you specify a certain function with the mouse right there and this will be called every time the player click with the mouse so what we will do is we will simply take this and place it right there so every single frame, the counter gets increased by the attack speed. And when the player clicks, and if the counter is greater than 25, then we will randomly generate a bullet. Now the counter right now, it's a global variable. Normally you don't want to have this. It should be linked with the player because eventually we will have multiple counter. And so this, instead of having this, we will do a player counter, attack counter actually. And here we will place this there counter equals zero and up here in our player we will add the attack counter which will be zero by default okay so this is how it looks so as you can see the player is not shooting bullet if i click now it shoots a bullet if i click again it shoots a bullet but if i spam click this will not work because the charge is not yet to 25 so the player can really only shoot once every 25 frames but if I take upgrades then my attack speed will increase and I can if I click fast I can spawn more bullets okay so everything seems to be working great so far so what we will do next is to control the player using the keyboard so one very important thing to understand with HTML5 is that you cannot ask the browser if a specific key is pressed if you ask let's say is a press the browser will not be able to answer it's simply not possible in HTML5 so instead of asking directly if a certain key is pressed what we will do is um, we can ask the browser to notify us when a specific key is being pressed and when a specific key is being released. And then we will have to do some kind of logic with those events. This is an event when the key is pressed. This is an event when the key is released. And then we will have a variable that will keep the state of every um, key. It's really annoying, but this is how it's done in HTML5. So in order to do that, first of all, we'll add a bunch of variable in our player. So we got attack speed, attack count, and then we will have pressing down, which will be false, pressing up, pressing left, and pressing right, all false by default. And then we'll need to create the function um, that will handle what, what happens when a specific key is pressed. And this is done with the document on key down. So it's always document on something. We have document on click, document on mouse move, document on key down. And 
this function will be called automatically when a specific uh, a key or when any key is being pressed and in order to know what key is being pressed we need to access it via the event key code so the key code is a number that represents what key was pressed. So in order to know what key is associated with what number, there's this website right there. I will put the link in the description and it tells you all the lists. So for example, we want um, one, it's 49. We want A, it's 65, etc. And basically what we want to do is to control the player using the key A as the W. So this is what I will implement. And the code for it, it looks something like this right there. So if the key code is um, 68, then it means it's a D. So pressing right will be through. Um, if it's 83, this means the key that was pressed down is S. So pressing down will be through, etc. And this is only the half of the job because if we just do um, on key down, we um, as soon as the player press the D, and even if it released D, the pressing right will still be true. So we need to do the second part. So ask the browser to notify us when the key is released. And this is done via the, um, the keyword on key up. So document on key down, document on key up. The logic is kind of the same, except that we will put false right there. So now with that code, we can tell if the player is pressing right or not, if the player is pressing up or not. And then we will need to use this information in order to really move the player. And to do that, we will create a new function called update player position. And if the player is pressing right, then we will increase the X position by 10. Um, if it's pressing left, we will decrease the X by 10 and same goes for down and up. And right now, um, the position is being updated when the mouse is being moved. So we will delete all, the, all of that. So I will put them into common. This is a common, by the way. So now when the mouse moves, nothing happened. And um, this piece of code, we will call it right before drawing the player. So right here, right before drawing the player, we will update the player position. Something like this. Okay, so this is how it looks so far. So as you can see, when I press a keyboard, well, you cannot really see it, but I'm currently using the keyboard to move around. If I click with my mouse, it should bullet. The bullets are still being shot um, randomly. And one big problem we have right now is that we can go out of bound. We are not testing the collision. So this is something we will need to add. So right after increasing the X by 10, increasing the Y by 10 or whatever, we need to verify if the new position is valid. So is position valid? And we have already done that code, if you remember correctly, back in the days with our mouse uh, on mouse move. What we were doing is calculating the position where the player wants to be. And then we were testing, is it too much to the left? If so, then make it to the most left valid position. If it's too much to the right, um, we would do something else, etc. So this part of the code is exactly what we need here. But instead of using mouse um, mouse X, it's actually player X, player X, and here player Y, player Y, something like this. So if the X is too small, then we will set that the X is the player width divided by two, um, which is the right thing. So let's just check how it looks. So as you can see now I cannot go out of bounds and not here and not here. So everything works perfectly. So I guess that's pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it and in the next video what I'm planning to do is to make it so when we um, click with the mouse it actually shoot in the direction we are aiming with the mouse. Another thing I'm planning to add is two types of attack. So there will be the regular attack and there will also be a special attack with the space bar that will do a big explosion. So it will be a lot of fun. So thanks again for watching and see ya!